I want to tell you how the pandemic started for me. I found myself driving on an eerily empty highway during rush hour. My heart was pounding. I didn't even know if I was allowed to be out there during the lockdown. There was sweat dripping off the steering wheel. And I do want to say, I have a condition where I sweat too much. So this is all true. There really were pools of sweat. I made it to the deserted office building and sprinted into the lobby. I was picking up what I was hoping would be my ultimate protection from this contagion, a high-definition webcam. Telemedicine is a term often used interchangeably with telehealth and is the practice of medicine using technology to deliver care from a distance. And this is how my journey began with telemedicine as a doctor. I was protecting myself and my family. I had a newborn at home. I also wanted to connect with those patients who were too scared to come into my clinic. In 2019, only 8% of Americans had used telehealth. By now, more than two-thirds of us have had a telemedicine visit. But you're probably wondering, as the world's beginning to open up a bit, and we're all craving for that in-person interaction, was this just a Band-Aid fix? Surely, my doctor cannot manage my health problems long-term over a computer screen. Well, the forced transition to telemedicine during the pandemic revealed a completely new era. It is now present in every aspect of healthcare. We're using it in primary care and in urgent care. It's in critical care with tele-ICU and tele-stroke, and even robotic surgeries. We're using it in chronic disease management and mental health. There are startups specializing in every imaginable niche, things like diabetes monitoring, LGBTQ health, and elderly care. With these vast telemedicine options, we can tailor the medical experience to each person's life experience. Now, these are all very exciting ideas, but it's the next layer of what telemedicine can do that I find exciting. And here it is. Human connection is the root of healing. And telemedicine improves the human connection. So when I'm vouching for telemedicine, though, I am not saying it should replace in-person care. It's a supplement, another tool in the toolbox to improve our health. This combination of in-person and virtual is called digitally enabled care. This is the combination that will change the way we all experience our health care in the years to come. And so what I really want to talk to you about is how this approach can improve the personal connection with your doctor. The first advantage of telemedicine is that the technology itself is rapidly expanding. This is so exciting. We have attachments for our cell phone that can look in ears and help diagnose an ear infection at home, or attachments that can listen to our lungs. We have Apple Watches and Fitbits that are constantly tracking our heart rates and our oxygen levels. We even have data on sleep scores and minutes exercised. All of this extra information tells us more about what makes you, you. We're still learning the best balance of when to use in-person versus virtual. But using telemedicine for some things might surprise you, like skin cancer, something you think you absolutely need to be seen in clinic to have your skin checked, right? There's an app for that. 
It can help detect skin cancer earlier using your cell phone camera. And all of this is collected while you are at home on your time. I just had a baby this past July, and I was working every day up until delivery. So I used telemedicine for the majority of my pregnancy visits. One day, the doctor was over two hours late, but it wasn't a big deal because I was at home and I could keep working. I hadn't driven through traffic, had to figure out parking. I wasn't waiting in a waiting room. I didn't have to find extra childcare for my other two kids at home. The data shows that the average person spends 121 minutes in a healthcare visit. Only 20 minutes is spent with the doctor. The rest of the time is made up of travel and in-clinic tasks. The average opportunity cost, or the amount of money someone would earn working instead of waiting, is $43. Telemedicine cuts out all this extra weight, and you can save time and money. So I just want to go through one example together in a little more detail. What if, when you went in to see your doctor, you were told you had high blood pressure? Typically, they might tell you to exercise, lose some weight, give you a handout and start you on a medicine, and then you'd follow up in three months. What if, in a digitally enabled world, when you were told you had high blood pressure, you were prescribed a meditation app to help you decrease stress? a nutrition app to help you make better food choices, and you had a virtual check-in scheduled with a nurse in two weeks to see how your pressures were, all before starting a medicine or seeing the doctor again. That second scenario sounds a lot more effective, right? Well, someone did a study on just this, looking at over 13,000 patients with high blood pressure. If you were part of the study, you had an entire care team accessible to you virtually. Blood pressure cuffs were mailed to your home and you were asked to check weekly with text reminders. And you had phone check-ins to tweak your medicines. An electronic monthly report card was sent to you to tell you how you were doing with different treatment options and strategies for lifestyle changes. And guess what? You had better blood pressure control. 79% of patients had control of their blood pressure versus 26. And patients saved $77 a month. For high blood pressure, if you use telemedicine, you can save money and be healthier. So why did this study work so well? Yeah, the technology helps. But we know connecting with a patient more frequently and treating them as a whole person helps in managing their disease better than just focusing on the science. This is called humanism. So we have rapidly expanding technology that improves the personalization of medicine. With telemedicine, doctors also have more time to listen. If you're skeptical about technology allowing for more listening, let me tell you about one doctor's experience. Dr. L was used to assessing patients with a history and a physical exam, but one day he discovered something interesting. When it came time to listen as part of the exam, instead of getting up close, he took a step back. He found a way to hear more clearly what was going on inside a patient's body by doing something revolutionary, not touching the patient. Was Dr. L doing telemedicine? Was he hundreds of miles away? Nope. Dr. Lanik was only a few feet away from the patient when he discovered the value of the stethoscope. In 1816, doctors put their ears directly onto a patient's chest to listen to their heart or lungs. This kind of exam could be invasive, even scandalous. By taking the contrary idea not to directly touch the patient allowed for many to feel more comfortable, allowed for doctors to hear 
more clearly and listen, and even prevented the exchange of germs. Does that sound familiar to telemedicine? <laughs> and look at the stethoscope now. It is the very symbol of good medicine. So humanism in medicine, or addressing the human in front of you, is the root of healing. It's not about more data, more science, or more technology. It's about the personal connection. We know a good bedside manner in a doctor affects outcomes. And that can be harder to find these days. Technology, in some ways, made that worse. Typical visits consist of the doctor with their back to you, eyes on a computer screen, looking over labs and x-rays, rather than looking at you, the patient. In-person visits, people leave, feeling as if their problems haven't even been heard. So to combat this, many doctors focus on the art of medicine. And despite all this excitement around telemedicine, some doctors understandably criticize it for eliminating the physical exam as part of the human connection of healing. I, too, believe in the power of the physical exam, the value of a healing handshake or hug. But what I have realized is that if doctors are not relying on the in-person exam in a telemedicine visit, instead, we're forced to listen to get our information. In the early days of the pandemic, I began to take some time honestly asking patients on video visits, how are you holding up? By doing this, I found the medical part of my visit went smoother and faster. For the doctors, this technology shift refocuses our attention on listening. The data over the past 20 years backs up the power of these communication skills. Studies on doctors who focus on listening and empathy have shown better patient understanding with better medication adherence, decreased physician burnout with faster and more efficient visits, decreased malpractice suits, improved patient satisfaction, and better health outcomes. Now, clearly, there are some evaluations that need to be done in person. But without the time spent on an in-person exam in telemedicine, Doctors, instead, listen to your personal story and gain all of these benefits. With all of this, using digitally enabled care isn't just equal to in-person care. It sets the whole stage for better care. And finally, the third advantage of telemedicine, it allows a patient to connect with a doctor in their home. The golden age of medicine is this image of a doctor with their black bag coming on a house call. The doctor met your whole family and could gain all of their insight. We intimately knew the entire environment that made up your world and how that contributed to your sickness. And we brought healing to you. With telemedicine, we can do all of this. I'm an allergist and immunologist. In my field in particular, I've seen how the environment caused problems. On video visits, I've seen candles and incense in the background of patients who have asthma and that were causing her problems breathing rather than any issue with medications. I've seen curtains filled with dust. I've been shown the outdoor garden where a patient always gets a rash and helped come up with triggers for her problems. This might make total sense to you from an allergist point of view, but it's important across the board in medicine. Consider a pediatrician who's able to assess development in a child in their own home, rather than that shy, non-talkative kid hiding behind mom's leg. A video visit allows the doctor into your home and may open up the door to healing in a way that is more effective than you might realize. Like many innovations, they're not always easy to adopt. And doctors are still working on their website manner. 
Doctors need to use this excitement around telemedicine to focus on communication skills and relearn how to assess a patient's environment. We're working on this right now, focusing on the medical training side to make sure that future doctors know how to do this well. But I urge the rest of us to take advantage of this house call. Introduce the doctor to your spouse or caregiver. Grab your medicines from the medicine cabinet. Take advantage of the power given to the patient in a telemedicine visit, and you can have the visit follow your agenda. Ultimately, telemedicine is one tool to improve your health. It's a house call with a focus on the patient's story. With digitally enabled care, we can get better data. For some diseases, we can have better health outcomes. Most importantly, we can tap into the human connection in a way we've never been able to in clinic. Yeah, the pure technological advancements of telemedicine are really, really exciting. But when it comes to our health, don't forget about the distinct advantage of being able to open up more personally and create a better human connection with, ironically, a virtual screen. <laughs>